How to read the Bible as a law of attraction manual. What is up, alien army? I am Oculus, the alien next door, purveyor of esoteric lore, and on this channel we discuss everything out of this world. So today's topic, we are going to be exploring Bible passages and how the Bible can be utilized as a great law of attraction and manifestation tool. So we're not going to be looking at the Bible from a religious perspective. We are going to be looking at the Bible as a sort of like workbook for manifestation and the law of attraction. So let's jump into it. I do just want to tell you that these interpretations are things that I channeled that resonate with me. I know that there are a lot of known authors and speakers about the law of attraction that talk about the Bible and how you can utilize phrases in the Bible to help you understand the law of attraction better. This is just something from my personal perspective. I don't know if any of this stuff has been written before or has been spoken of before, so I just wanted to throw that out there because if it has, I don't know about it. This is just things that resonate with me that I channeled and that I am going to be explaining to you. And the, and serpent, the serpent said unto the woman, woman ye shall not surely die. die. For God, For God doth, doth know that in that the in day ye eat thereof, thereof then your, then your eyes, eyes shall be shall opened. Be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So this passage, which people commonly think that the serpent is Satan or the devil or Lucifer or any name that you wish to call him, this passage actually does not name the serpent anything. This passage simply states that a talking serpent or perhaps a serpent that was communicating subliminally or telepathically was speaking to Eve. So when I was interpreting this passage, I viewed the serpent as a metaphor because the serpent, as we know, can shed its skin and remain the same, but somehow regenerated and changed, metamorphosized from that which it once was. The serpent is also a representative of kundalini energy, the serpent that lies dormant energetically in the body, in the base of the spine. And it's said that when the kundalini energy raises, that there is an intense spiritual response and the individual tends to be changed from there on out. So the serpent essentially sheddeth its skin and changes yet still remains the same much as a spiritual awakening within a human they will shed their old self and then they will awaken and blossom into their new self so they are essentially shedding the old skin and embracing the new skin though they remain the same as the soul is the one constant in this process as I saw it, the serpent is a metaphorical representative of fourth dimensional energy. Fourth dimensional energy can also be likened to time or shape shifting energy. And I discussed this in a few of my other videos as well. So this spiritual awakening, though the serpent was never named in the Bible, that is the poetic irony of it because the serpent who helps bring about a certain spiritual awakening process can be viewed according to the eye of the observer. Therefore, the serpent is subjective. Whoever is witnessing the serpent, the serpent shall speak to that individual in the way that the native is most likely to understand in the easiest manner. The serpent is going to appear in the way the seeker wishes to receive the message from the serpent, wishes to receive an awakening alert, 
or software upgrades, so to speak. And it is individual upon the individual. The serpent, he taketh many forms and fashions that soever he knows to behoove him in the moment. We can liken this to a magician because they take on many forms yet still remain the same. But the magician can be a chameleon and appear to blend in with their surroundings as well as stand out when they so desire. So if we want to look at this from a metaphorical perspective, that passage entails that the messenger of the God force energy appeared to Eve in a way in which she would respond to accordingly to help her own evolution. As we proceed along, I am going to be speaking about Adam and Eve, not from a man or a woman perspective, not from a husband or wife perspective, though some of the quotes that I will be telling you do refer to them as that way, but remember, we are looking through this metaphorical lens at the Bible passages. So from here on, I will be referring to Adam, masculine energy, Eve, feminine energy. Adam, conscious mind, Eve, subconscious mind. And this energy lies dormant within us all, no matter what gender one identifies as. Everyone has masculine energy, everyone has feminine energy. And when those two are in alignment in the perfect balance, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, that is the place where miracles dwell. The union or marriage of these two principles of mind is going to be the avenue which grants you your greatest manifestations. And the, and the Lord, Lord God, God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So the serpent, being an outside force from the subconscious mind, the woman, Eve, was able to influence the actions of Eve in uh, portending the message for Eve that she would understand in a language that she would be able to easily decipher. The serpent is the outside influence which causes a reaction or a response on the inside, the inner realm, the realm of the woman, the wife, the subconscious mind. And what this means as to what I channeled, the subconscious mind is able to interpret outside influence in a way where the outside influence will be able to tempt them, to draw them in, to beguile them into performing acts of what the outside influence wills or suggests upon them. It is all about hypnotic suggestion. Therefore, when the Lord said unto the serpent that he shall now be banished, what that means is that now the awakening force which will awaken individuals to their God force energy will not be able to be easily seen to the untrained eye, to the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind, the feminine energy, the Eve, is going to accept and create whatever influence is willed upon it from an outside source or maybe internally if there's already been enough influences to the subconscious mind. But remember in this story, Adam and Eve 
conscious and subconscious, the mind was pure until it was infiltrated by an outsider which wanted to bestow upon the conscious and the subconscious mind the art of awareness so that one can view their surroundings through the eyes of God. So the subconscious mind, Eve, was easily beguiled into doing what the serpent wanted. That in turn led Eve, the subconscious energy, to as well tempt Adam, the conscious mind, masculine energy, into also participating in what was going on within the subconscious. So when we're discussing the subconscious, the subconscious mind is much larger than the conscious mind. The conscious mind occupies a little bit of space within the human monkey mind, as I like to refer to it. And the subconscious mind, because it's so massive, was able to as well seduce the conscious mind into seeing what the subconscious mind was engaged in in that moment and the conscious mind there within joined. And with this, this is how reality is either manipulated and this is why sometimes individuals can have a false perception of something. It might seem real consciously, but it is really the temptation of the subconscious mind beckoning the conscious mind into its own awareness. And then the conscious mind is sort of like vortexed in into that whirlpool. And then it believes because the subconscious mind is so much more massive, everything that the subconscious mind is influencing the conscious mind into believing. So when Eve, the subconscious mind, was beguiled by the serpent, there was absolutely no direction from Adam or the conscious mind. And the thing to keep in mind here is that when we are dealing with the conscious mind, the conscious mind is the director. The conscious mind is the one who is set to govern the subconscious mind. Because without said governance or direction bestowed upon it via the conscious mind, the subconscious mind is open to receive any and all hypnotic suggestion. That's why they say that until the age of seven years old, children are just in that theta state in the subconscious mind predominantly, and they are not able to discern or decipher what is coming from an outside source and what is actually really going on within them because their conscious mind, their director, is not fully formed. And patterns and processes, emotional processes, thought processes, picked up before one turns seven years old or while they are seven years old, that is when they, these ingrained patterns will form because the subconscious mind has no direction and no conscious mind developed enough to steer it in the direction that it consciously desires to go. It will be all over the place. And when those particular patterns are not recognized within the psyche, what happens is that now these children who are well past the age of seven, some in their teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, so on and so forth, they will have that same conditioning that was brought unto them from an outside source when they were in those formative years before their full conscious mind was able to steer the ship, these patterns may continue throughout their lifetime if they are continuously left unchecked. Of course, this can happen into adulthood as well, and patterns that are unwanted can be formed through outside influences, but typically when someone is up to seven years old, this is the theta state and the mind is most susceptible to hypnotic suggestion. That is why a lot of times manifestation coaches will say that in order for your manifestation to be immediately accepted into the subconscious, 
one ought to be in a drowsy or hypnotic state in the theta state as well as in those seven minutes before falling seven inches saying seven 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 minutes before falling asleep fully seven minutes to wake up fully seven years of age mm. <laughs> someone go to the casino so anyway within those seven minutes that it takes to fall asleep and you're thinking about your desire and feeling your desire as if it is real then your subconscious mind is likely to accept it easily because now your conscious mind is giving direction to the subconscious whilst in that data state and it's declaring unto the subconscious mind this is what i want to manifest you must accept it those are the rules and here is the reason why unto, unto the, woman, the woman he said i will, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee so what does this mean? Now, some might take it quite literally that now Eve, because she disobeyed God, must be at the whim and mercy of her husband, Adam, and desire to fulfill everything that Adam suggests and commands of her. But when we take it into the context of Eve, the woman being the feminine aspect of the mind, the subconscious mind, and Adam, the man, the husband, the masculine energy, the conscious mind, here is the key to creation. Because when the Lord, or sometimes I've seen Florence Scovelshin refer to, if you want to replace the word Lord with law in the Bible, it will make even more sense. That's just something if it resonates with you. There you go. But when the Lord declared unto Eve that you will bring forth children out of sorrow, what that meant was not childbirth as some people insist that it is indeed it is a birthing and a conception and a creation but it is the creation of our outer realm based off of our emotions and subconscious whims so if we want to take a closer look at this passage when unto the woman he said greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee this in my interpretation from what i channeled is essentially the law the lord saying unto the subconscious mind that you will bring forth and multiply that which is already going on within you and it will be sorrowful unless it is directed by the conscious mind so what we have here is a very interesting concept we have the subconscious mind which is built to multiply and create reality because the subconscious mind is massive it takes up way more space than the conscious mind right and that's its job it's to fulfill whatsoever is impressed upon it and many metaphysical and law of attraction guides and teachers and coaches as well say this so what's essentially going on with this bible verse is stating that the subconscious mind will multiply in sorrow without direction from the conscious mind and the subconscious mind shall always desire direction from the conscious mind or else the subconscious mind will multiply things that are sorrowful will bring about things that both 
planes of mind do not want but because the subconscious mind is so much more massive it can easily influence the conscious mind into believing something going on within the subconscious and then the conscious mind shines a spotlight on it and says okay this must be real the subconscious mind is telling me that it's real the subconscious mind is my wife so sure i'll listen to them but the conscious mind was not designed to take orders from the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind was designed to objectify and project the reality that the conscious mind, the leader, wills upon it. Which is also why I believe there's a saying, I'm not sure exactly how it goes, but it says something like, the husband is the head of the household and the wife is the neck of the household because you could have a head rolling around right if it's decapitated and shit but where is it going i mean you kicking that thing around like a fucking soccer ball but with the support and the help from the neck now the head can look at anything it wants and it can declare where it wills the neck to turn the head and then that focused attention is turned towards that point of reality and boom it is objectified and made into manifestation so the desire that the lord told unto eve for her husband the direction of her husband is really well you're going to do what your husband wants not the other way around you're going to do what the conscious mind wants not the other way around and this, this is about energy in general feminine energy is meant to receive and multiply masculine energy is to will and direct that which what it wants to be multiplied so when you're consciously thinking of something and you are able to direct the subconscious the subconscious is gladly going to bring about into physical form that which the conscious mind desires because remember the subconscious desires to fulfill the conscious mind and when these two planes of the mind are united in holy matrimony they work well together because the subconscious knows its place take not direction from an outside influence submit to the will only of the conscious mind the conscious mind knows its place whatsoever instructions it imparts upon the subconscious mind must be willed into existence that is the law which the lord law gaveth upon the human and this is the key to unlocking the gates of heaven on the third dimensional plane the gates of heaven are opened on the third dimensional plane once one gets their mind right and now we will step into unlocking the mystery of the gates of heaven on the third dimensional plane. So he drove, he drove out, out the man, man and, he and he placed at the, at the east, east of the Garden, Garden of Eden, Eden cherubims, cherubims and a flaming sword, sword which, which turned, turned every way, way to keep the way, the way of the of tree the of life. life. So what this essentially means is now the gates of heaven, the ultimate fifth dimensional reality and above on the third dimensional plane are only going to be opened for those who have mastered the lessons of what the subconscious mind and the conscious mind were designed to do. And the flaming sword essentially translates if we want to look at the elements of air swords fire the flaming sword this is the illuminated mind swords rule the mind fire illuminates in the darkness and if we want to look at the attributes of the fire element and air element we know that they equal ether or the unseen or the heavenly realms. 
So only those who have gained sound mind, the marriage or union betwixt the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, are able to enter the gates of heaven. And heaven on earth is indeed a state of mind. And when one unlocks this key, that the subconscious mind cannot be trusted to meander along without direction from the conscious mind, that is when the gates of hell may open for the individual. Because the subconscious mind is just going to accept and multiply whatsoever is willed upon it, perhaps from an outside influence or perhaps from a paradigm which was impressed upon the subconscious mind years and years ago. The subconscious mind is going to be able to trick the conscious mind into believing that this is real and the conscious mind does not feel comfortable taking orders which is why there are some times that someone might have their feelings or their thoughts seeming to run amok and consciously they know that there is something wrong but they can't seem to shake it this is because the conscious mind is not comfortable whatsoever accepting what the subconscious mind is bestowing upon it because the subconscious mind desires innately to be led not to be the leader the conscious mind innately is designed to be the leader so when one attains the unity betwixt the two the subconscious mind knows its place the conscious mind knows its place and wills whatsoever it desires consciously onto the subconscious mind the subconscious mind basically says yes master i will oblige to your every whim because i innately desire to do so and that is how friends the gates of heaven are opened unto the seeker the union, the marriage betwixt Adam and Eve, masculine and feminine, conscious and subconscious. So it's important, especially when we're looking at the Bible, not to take things quite so literally. If we look at things from a metaphorical standpoint, then we can interpret the planes of mental existence and we can see that because the Bible was written in archaic language sometimes misinterpretations may happen where someone can literally take something as this is physically possible or this is physically impossible when we're looking at things in metaphors and we're resonating with what rings true for us then the bible can be utilized as a great tool to help you with your manifestation techniques because essentially the bible in my opinion is a great workbook a guidebook a great tool to be had when we are going about seeking and producing proactive change in our life experience so that's what i got for you today i'm oculus the alien next door and we will chit chat again soon